Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another Kano Tryharding Modern. Uh, even though this deck's not really a tryharding deck anymore, it's like less than 1% of the metagame um, in terms of 5 0 finishes on MTG Goldfish, um, we're going to be playing Tron. Lots of people are like, when's Kano playing Tron again? We want Tron. So I guess I got to give the people what they want. Um, even though it's not quite as fun for me anymore, but you know, I don't mind. Uh, this is a very different list than the one I was playing. This is a recent 5-0 list minus Crucible of Worlds plus Worm Coil Engine inside. Uh, because I will never play Crucible of Worlds in my Tron list. I think it is bad for a host of reasons that I have stated over and over and over again and do not feel the need to elaborate on here. So what's different about this list? First off, uh, we're back to three Relic of Progenitus in the main 18 lands, uh, which I think is kind of reasonable. Um... Given the current state of the metagame, this is also teched to be slightly better versus aggro. We're playing three Worm Coil Engine. Uh, we're also playing some Oblivion Stones in the main, which tells me that we're seeing a lot of Blood Moon, or a lot of uh, land interacting enchantments, maybe Spreading Seas, that we're going to need to blow up at some point. Um, but also out of the sideboard, we've got uh, Thrag Tusk to help with the aggro matchup, a second Warping Wheel. We're not maxing out on Answers. We're only playing a couple of Nature's Claims and Veil of Summer. There is no Chalice um, in the main... Or, there is a Chalice in the sideboard, excuse me. Um, but other than that, it looks pretty standard. So, uh, I guess I'll just take this into a league and we'll see what happens. I need to shut sound effects off. Huh. One moment. All right, we are going to be on the play for round one. Well, we've got two thirds of Tron, um, two threats to play off of Tron. I think I'm gonna keep because we do have a Chromatic Star. This is a little bit risky. I think we have better, we possibly have better sixes than this, but um, there are a lot of top decks we can have in the top three cards that can get us to Tron. Um, if we draw Ancient Stirrings, there's a really good chance we can find Tower. If we draw Sylvan Scrying, we will get a Tower. If we draw uh, Tower, obviously, we'll get a Tower. So that's, you know, a minimum of like 12 out of 54 <laughs> or 53 cards that we can have that will get us to where we need to go. Um, now, opponent is playing the Yorian deck, so there's a good possibility they do have Spreading Seas. They can take us off Tron. But... If we get Karn, Great Creator, down fast enough, uh, there's not going to be a lot they can do. So opponent starts Temple Garden, untapped, into an Arboreal Grazer, playing Growth Chamber. So this looks like a, a Titan deck, which is interesting. We get another Great Creator. I am going to Sack Star immediately, because I think turn 3 Tron is still going to be the most important. Ancient Stirrings was a fantastic draw. Unfortunately, we do not get Urza's Tower. So I'm going to take another star, move the rest to the bottom, play power plant, play star, pass the turn, and we really need to draw that tower. Okay, opponent plays a soccer tribe elder into a temple garden tapped. We untap, we draw a chromatic star, sack star for green, see what we draw, Karn great creator, play star, sack star for green, see what we draw. Tower. Tower, Karn. So we did make it. Uh, there's a good chance, though, that my opponent is going to play like a Titan next turn. So we're going to go ahead and wish and get... Um, I think we still wish for coding first. Pass the turn. This opponent's going to probably sack Steve here on the end step. Or not. They don't need the mana. That's interesting. Um, they might be attacking Karn, possibly. Opponent scoops. All right, well, that's that's good. I think that that's kind of abnormal for us. I'm going to open up a browser window here, see if I can't find a recent uh, Primeval Titan Yorian list. Nope, there is nothing currently available that looks like uh, what our opponent is playing. So, if I had to guess, Nature's Claim, we're probably going to need more than Relic of Progenitus. Uh, I don't think it's likely that my opponent is going to be using their Grave all that much. We might want Veil of Summer, because they are playing blue, but I, it kind of remains to be seen. I think we're fine with just Nature's Claim for now. 
I also had people telling me on the last deck list for Tron that I was playing that Platinum Angel is bad. And I thought I enumerated in the videos where I started playing Pat Platinum Angel that I was like, yeah, I, I don't actually think this is good, but I 5 0 with the list, so I consider them a good luck charm. <laughs> uh, so we have Sylvan Scrying, Urza's Mine. If we draw a second Tron land... Uh, this is a turn three Tron, provided, of course, Sylvan Scrying doesn't get countered, and we do draw a second Tron land. Um, I think with Karn, Great Creator as our threat of choice, I'm going to keep this hand. Mully Lean to six is, I think, probably slightly better than this, but I don't really feel like mulliganing right now, even if it's the quote-unquote wrong choice. All right, opponent's turn one. They start Windswept Heath, Fetch, Shock Temple Garden... Grazer. Grazer putting Valakut into play. We draw an Ancient Stirrings. So that could potentially be a better use of our green mana than Sylvan Scrying. If we don't know, if we don't have two thirds of Tron, Sylvan Scrying is, you know, potentially harmful. So opponent plays a Ghost Quarter into a Dryad of the Elysian Grove. We untap. We draw a Power Plant. So play Power Plant. Sack Star for green. Um, Sylvan Scrying. We're going to get Tower, and our opponent is going to be forced to Ghost Quarter us prior to our next turn. And it looks like since they mulliganed, they might be a little bit short on resources. They didn't play a second land to Dryad. So um, if our opponent's forced to Ghost Quarter here, we can try an Ancient Stirrings to get our uh, final Tron piece. Hopefully. Hopefully. It's not a guarantee, of course. Okay. Opponent lets us untap, lets us draw. We get an expedition map. They're going to ghost quarter this power plant. Okay, get a forest. Go to our main phase. Play tower. Play expedition map. Pass the turn. This just lets us guarantee Tron. Um, we can't play an additional land this turn, so it's not like Ancient Stirrings getting the land immediately matters. Opponent, Eladomri's Call. They get a Ramanop Excavator. So if they get another land, they can start Ghost Quartering us a lot. Okay, looks like that's exactly what's going to happen here. Opponent plays Excavator, plays replays Ghost Quarter, attacks us for two. Okay, on their end step, let's go get Power Plant. We untap, we draw a blast zone, they are going to hit tower. So the bad news is this is our last basic. Okay. Um, so we need to, we need to get on board here. We need to try and get our opponent to do something that is not ghost quarter us. I'm not sure that there's anything I can really do. Getting rid of, um... Our relics out of the main deck is actually pretty painful here. I could play out Blast Zone and try and tick it up to three, but I'm not confident that will work. I can't kill either of their creatures with um, Karn, at least in any way I know of. I might need to wish for Relic. Unfortunately, Graft Digger's Cage does not stop my opponent from playing lands from the grave with Ramanop Excavator. And next turn, we're getting Ghost Quartered twice. Now let's play Karn and go get a Relic. Pass the turn. Let's see what our opponent does. Okay, they replay Ghost Quarter. They kill Blast Zone, replay Ghost Quarter, kill Urza's Mine, play an Amulet, attack and kill Karn, sure. So we untap, we draw Karn Liberated, which we are unfortunately a long way off of casting, play Power Plant, play Relic, nuke the Graves, draw a card. Now, if we can draw Tron, um, we're right back on track even though we've been greatly hampered in that regard. So we've lost a power plant, a tower, and a mine. We just need any combination of other Tron pieces. 
Uh, I'm going to take any land that I can get right now, because I am holding threats. I'm going to want to be making land drops, even if I'm not drawing Tron pieces. Um, I am on a short clock here. Okay, I'm going to plays a Windswept Teeth out of hand. They crack Windswept Teeth, get a Temple Garden tapped, which untaps it. Replay Windswept Teeth. So yeah, now they're just trying to race us down. Okay, we untap. We draw a Chromatic Star. So, Ancient Stirrings. Get a tower. Rest to the bottom. Ugh, we're taking four, three next turn. Unless our opponent has like Primeval Titan and we're just going to die. Um, I can play out O's Stone and have activation guaranteed next turn. Otherwise I can just cantrip. But I don't have anything that I can draw that's going to be useful. So we're going to play out O's Stone. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Goes to their main phase. They crack Windswept Teeth. Oh, they can shoot us for six, so we're actually going to go down to a minimum of two. And then I think we die to Rampant Growth somehow. Okay, yeah, we're dead to Primeval Titan. All right, well, I mean, if you're Tron and you get Ghost Quartered four times, there's a really good chance you're going to lose. Uh, it's just the way things are. I'm going to bring Relic back in, and I'm going to cut a Warping Whale, I think. And we'll try it like this. I'll leave one Relic in the side. I don't know how likely it is they assemble that exact combo in an 80-card deck. But I can't imagine it's that consistent. Um, this is, again, kind of tempting. But I think I need to mulligan. Uh, if only this were two different Tron lands. Let's see, did my opponent mulligan? They did not. They kept seven. All right, we're going to try keeping this. I'm going to put back Ulamog. We do have an Ancient Stirrings, and we're just going to need to get a little bit lucky, I think. So, players is mine. Pass the turn. Opponent leads on Plains Amulet. We draw Kozilek, not really what we want to see. We drew Power Plant, and we get Tower. Play Tower, pass the turn. All right, it's going to be Ghost Quarter or Bust. Okay, put a plays Growth Chamber. This does give them three mana this turn. They pick up Growth Chamber. They play Dryad, which could let them play a Ghost Quarter, but it does not look... Hmm. That is a lot of mana. And I'm not sure Karn Liberated is really going to do the trick here. Because uh, they can just, like, play Primeval Titan. Well, play Power Plant. We are playing Karn. The question is, what are we down ticking on? And I think the answer is it has to be Dryad here. Because Dryad is what's going to let them do silly Valakut shenanigans. But they might be able to do that with three amulets. I mean, I don't know what the odds that an 80-card deck draws a three of... But I can't imagine it's that high, uh, especially with no ways... Uh, I mean, they might be playing Saga, but I was going to say no real ways to tutor for it. I have to hope that they drew three amulets and uh, they didn't draw any titans. Uh, really, the only way that we're going to get out of this is if we draw, like, uh, Blast Zone, which we are playing two of. If we draw, uh, like, Karn Great Creator would be of an enormous help here. Because if we drew Karn Great Creator, we could Liquid Metal Coating and shut off Simic Growth Chamber before it untaps the first time, which would be enormous. I, I don't think we would Oblivion Stone. So that's kind of what we're hoping for, anyway. A Karn Great Creator, that is. All right, here comes the big mana. Soccer Tribe Elder, which can get them even more mana. Opponent plays Yorian. We untap and draw Sylvan Scrying. And if that's all they can do with that mana, I mean, at the very least, uh, we're safe for another turn. Now, I'm not particularly worried about a random 4 5, but the question is do I need to down tick on my opponent's lands? What I'm going to do here is I'm going to play Worm Coil Engine, and I'm going to Sylvan Scrying to go get a Blast Zone. Um, the question is, what do we do with this Karn? Now, I don't think there's anything my opponent can do with 8 mana that they can't do with 7. It might be better for me to just attack their hand and leave Karn on board as an additional threat. I could down tick and hit an Amulet of Vigor, um, which would limit my opponent to exactly 6 mana. 
but the greed in me wants to blast zone them. Um, I think we're going to hit a land. Okay. Play a worm coil engine. Sylvan scrying for blast zone. Pass the turn. Then we have the option of casting Kozilek or casting blast or activating blast zone next turn. Blast zone being the backup plan, like, you know, if we were to get uh, hit with a ghost quarter or something this turn. We untap and draw Karn Great Creator, um, which is good. Go to combat. Attack our opponent for six. Play blast zone. Kill all the amulets. And then... I could wish for Pithing Needle and Pithing Needle Saga, which would make my life a lot easier as well. Yeah, we're going to be playing a Kozilek. Oh, do I not have a Pithing Needle in this list? I don't. Um, in that case, what we'll do is get a Chalice and play Chalice on zero in case of Summoner's Pact. Pass the turn. Okay, Saga ticks up to two. Opponent's going to kill Karn, that's fine. They play a Misty. So they can start making tokens. We draw Worm Coil, go to combat, attack for six, take our opponent to eight, play Urza's Mine, play Kozilek, draw a bunch of cards, and the match is over. All right, well, that was round one. I'll see you guys in round two. So Kano's an absolute moron, and what he did was record this next match on mute. So you can't actually hear him talking, and the editor is going to have trying to have a field day with editing this thing. It would just cut this entire match out, so rather than do that, I'm doing a quick dub over and letting you guys know what happened. We played against Hammer, we got absolutely obliterated, and I talk about why after the fact. Uh, basically, Tron is poorly positioned against Hammer, and I think the reason that no one is playing Tron is likely because of the fact that Tron is terrible versus hyper-fast aggro combo. So uh, I'm going to speed through this really quick and then get back to round three. I played that entire match on mute, so nobody heard my voice, nobody heard anything. Um, it's not surprising, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back speed that up, uh, talk over it for a second, and then we'll move on to round three. I can't believe I did that, but you know what? At least it was, at least it was over the least interesting matchup. Like, <laughs> so nobody really missed anything there. Like, we saw a hammer, we were like, well, we're probably gonna lose, and guess what? We lost immediately. Um, but what I was saying, um, right there at the end was, I think that even if you are if you're playing tron first off in a meta game full of hammer you are probably never going to win um but i think that the fact that that deck is so popular it's the number one deck in the meta game um according to mtg goldfish it's the most 5-0 finishes um i think that that deck being so popular is one reason why people are not playing Tron right now, because even if you are teched the best possible way against it, you have Force of Negation, or not Force of Negation, you have Force of Vigors, you have plenty of green cards to pitch to it, um, you can nuke two important permanents, you got Chalice in the sideboard, you got Warping Whales, like, even if you have all of that, um, it's still like 70-30, not in your favor. So, like, your opponent's going to win 70-plus percent of the time, and you're going to win less than 30 percent. Um, so this is a Luris deck, and we are on the draw, which makes me leery of keeping any hand relying on Expedition Map. This is probably Hammer again. Um, I will not be speeding this one up, because I can see that I'm actually recording. This hand is worse. All right, I will keep this. I'm going to put back Karn, Great Creator, and a Sylvan Scrying. I do actually want to keep Relic in case it is like a Luris. Uh, we drew Karn, Great Creator. So play Expedition, or play Mine, play uh, Chromatic Star, pass the turn. We're hoping to draw a second Tron land. We get Lava Spiked. This is just Feral Luris Burn. Opponent attacks us for two. We draw Tower. Fantastic. Play Tower. Sack Star for green. We draw Worm Coil. Sylvan Scrying. We have Mine, Tower. We need Power Plant pass the turn unfortunately i think we are we have probably lost bolt opponent attacks us for two we reveal an ancient stirrings go to five opponent plays a third land so um 
Karn Great Creator Trinisphere is not an out. Uh, play Worm Coil Engine. Play Chromatic Star. Pass the turn. We gotta hope they don't have two bolts. Opponent drew a land. Searing Blaze. Suspend Rift Bolt. We draw Oblivion Stone. Um, so they can block with Goblin Guide. I think the first thing I'm gonna do is Sack Star for green and draw. Okay, we drew another Tron land. I cannot stop my opponent from casting Rift Bolt, but I can go get a Trinisphere, uh, which is, I think, what I'm gonna do here. I could also just Blast Zone to kill Goblin Guide, but I... Hmm... Because they can't, they don't have any cards in hand. They can't bolt go like they can't block and then bolt Goblin Guide, right? I could play Karn, play Oblivion Stone, and uptick to make a three three that can block. Uh, I could put Chalice on one, which would stop my opponent from casting a lot of things. Or I can get Trinisphere, which stops my opponent from casting more than one spell next turn. I can still play out a Relic and animate that to block as well. So play a Power Plant. I just have to do it in the right order. Oh, I can't, I can't wish for, I can't wish and animate. So we'll go get Trinisphere, then play Trinisphere. Uh, do I want to crack Relic to draw? I don't think I do. They don't really play Delve cards or anything. I guess they could play Lava Mancer, but attack our opponent for six. We go back up to eight, pass the turn. Now if our opponent wants to actually cast this Rift Bolt, they have to spend three more mana on it. And now they can't cast anything else. They do attack us with Karn. We draw Ugin. So play Blast Zone, go to combat, attack for six, back up to nine, play Ugin, kill Goblin Guide, sack Relic, and wish for another Worm Coil. Pass the turn, and that should do it. Opponent Boros charms us to five, so we hit them for six and kill them with Ugin. All right, barely squeaked that one out, I think. So Thrag Tusk is coming in. We could Nature's Claim our own artifacts to uh, gain life. Um, I think we just bring in Thrag Tusk over like Kozilek. Warping Whale doesn't really hit their creatures. I guess it does hit Monastery Swift Spear, but maybe that's better than a Relic. We'll try it like this. We are on the draw, which is a significant disadvantage. Um, this hand is super slow, so that's a mulligan. This hand is also super slow. Um, that's the best hand we've seen. We'll put back Karn, put back Oblivion Stone. And unfortunately, unless we top deck a Tron land immediately, we've got to lead on Chromatic Star. We can't really lead on map. Opponent leads on Swift Spear. Okay, so Warping Whale might get some work done. Play a tower, play a star, pass the turn. Opponent on taps, they play a mountain. Lava Spike, Prowess Trigger. Skewer the Critics, Prowess Trigger. Hit us for three, down to ten. We untap, we draw a map. Sack Star for green. We draw Blast Zone. Play Blast Zone. And things are not looking good, but we got a Warping Whale. Pass the turn. Opponent plays a Sun Baked Canyon. Lava Spikes, we're down to seven. We draw a Thrag Tusk. Play out a map. Play out a map. Pass the turn. We're going to need a miracle here if we're going to win, and it doesn't look like we're going to get it because we died at any lightning bolt, of which our opponent is playing all of them. There are enough lightning bolts in this format that um, you you basically cannot actually play all of the lightning bolts in a deck. Uh, and that's, that's amazing to me, really. All right, so we will play first. Hopefully we get a much better hand. Two-thirds of Tron, two spheres is good. No real threats, though, that we can play immediately. Um, but we're going to have to try anyway. Pass the turn. Opponent did keep seven. They suspend Rift Bolt to start. Okay, we drew Tron, so now we're trying to draw threats. Blast Zone. Um, Ancient Stirrings is a good top deck. I will take another Chromatic Sphere. Pass the turn. So we want to draw Worm Coil Engine. We have three in our deck. I could have actually sided in the fourth, but I still like having it as a wish target. That might be more reasonable than like an Ulamog in a situation like this. So play a tower, play sphere, 
Sack it for green. We get an Oblivion Stone. Uh, play Expedition Map. Sack it for another tower. So we can at least play an Ulamog next turn. And then play out Oblivion Stone. Pass the turn. So we're probably getting Boros Charmed. Smash to Smithereens. All right. I kind of walked into that one then. Opponent plays a Goblin Guide off of Sunbaked Canyon. Bolts us. Bolts us. Takes us to six. We're drawing Ulamog. All right. Ulamog, I trust in you. Take out our opponent's white mana. Pass the turn. Gonna have to hope that running Ulamogs is good enough. We draw Sylvan Scrying. Go to combat. Attack for 10. Exile the top 20 cards of our opponent's deck. Hit them down to 9. Play Ulamog number 2. Take out our opponent's creature and their land. They did not have a lightning bolt. So I don't think they can win now. We untap, we draw an expedition map. So play map, crack map, get a Sanctum of Ugin, play Sanctum, play Ugin. Oh, they're just dead. I, I just I was for some reason thinking I needed to win with Exile, so this is just BM. I apologize, opponent. I actually did not intend to BM you. I'm just dumb. All right. Cool. Well, we're two and one going into round four. See you guys there. All right. Welcome to round four. I apologize if you can hear my air conditioner. It just kicked on. Um, I will not be keeping this. We have much better sixes than that. This is debatably not one of them, but we do have two Ancient Stirrings, two Spheres and Stars, and a map. So I'm going to put back Ugin, and we're going to try it. I'll turn down my microphone a little bit. i just try and talk a little louder um, so that maybe it's not as noticeable. So we'll play. Oh, we are against Aspiring Spike. All right. And he's playing Hammer, of course. Uh, Sack Star for green. Get a Warping Whale. Now I could Warping Whale to just take out the Sentinel. I think we Ancient Stirrings, they can draw a card. We get Nurse's Mine. Rest of the bottom. Players is mine. Play Sphere. Pass the turn. Opponent plays a Stoneforge Mystic. Getting Cauldra. Okay. We untap. We draw mine. Play Tower. Sack Star for green. We get a Sylvan Scrying. Ancient Stirrings. We will pay one to prevent this. Take Worm Coil Engine as it is our only threat. And then we can Warping Whale to take out Mystic. And play Expedition Map. Pass the turn. Opponent on taps. They play a second Esper Sentinel and a Flooded Strand. They attack us for one. Go down to 18. Crack map. Let's go get a Blast Zone. Untap. Draw Chromatic Sphere. Um... Play Worm Coil. Play Mine, play Sphere, and pay for both of these. Pass the turn. Opponent Sacks Flooded Strand for Hollowed Fountain tapped. They untap. They play a Mystic Gate. 
no attacks for our opponent. We draw Ulamog. So, go to combat. Attack for six. Opponent takes six, goes to 11. Play Blast Zone. Play Ulamog. Okay. We got there, but barely. So, Warping Whale, Nature's Claim in. Uh, Relic out, Kozilek out, Ugin's out. Um. Oh, maybe I keep the... I don't think Thrag Tusk is really going to be of much use here. It is better than Ugin. So we'll try it like that. So Aspiring Spike is the current trophy leader. I think. Anyway, I haven't checked. I mean, we have a Warping Whale, but this hand is not that great. On the draw, I don't know how we possibly win unless we have an early Nature's Claim. Um, Alright, I'll keep this hand. We got two-thirds of Tron. I'm going to play Sea Chrome Coast, Esper Sentinel. We draw Forest. Uh, play Mine. I'm not going to play Out Relic. Okay, opponent plays a Flooded Strand, attacks us for one, we draw Expedition Map. Play Power Plant, play Map. This is not a great sequence, but it's one that I think um, actually has a little bit of merit in this situation. Oh, Jeskai. This isn't Hammer, then, I don't think. I'm playing like it's Hammer. Opponent Archmage's Charms, our Expedition map. Okay. Huh. Well, we drew Karn Liberated. Play a Forest. Ancient Stirrings. Um, I'm not going to pay one to prevent that, because I want to keep up Warping Whale. We get Tower. Rest of the bottom, any order. Pass the turn, leave up Warping Whale. Okay, opponent's going to crack map. Get a snow-covered island. They attack us for one. We'll take one. Untap. Play Tower. Attempt a Karn. Not going to pay one to prevent it. Okay, opponent is playing Counterspell. Play Chromatic Sphere. This gives us a free redraw if we draw like an Ulamog next turn. So this is more like Control playing Esper Sentinel Stoneforge Mystic. Attack us for one. They got Sword of Feast and Famine. We draw Ancient Stirrings. Sack Star for green. We get a Blast Zone. I could kill Sentinel with Blast Zone. Let's Ancient Stirrings. And I will pay one to prevent that. A Karn, great creator. Play out a power plant. Play Karn. Okay. Counter spell. Well, I've given my opponent a million draws, so it's not like this is news. 
Um, play relic, sack relic. Okay, we get another Karn. Pass the turn. We need to leave up Warping Whale though. Um, even if it does draw our opponent a card. So opponent is going to Stoneforge Mystic and Sword of Feast and Famine. We get to Warping Whale. Opponent gets a card out of it. We untap. We draw Karn Liberated. So we can play Great Creator and we can play Karn Liberated in the same turn here. Play Karn. Uh, wish with Karn. Get Coding. Play Blast Zone. Play Karn Liberated. Take out our opponent's red mana. Pass the turn. Okay. Opponent plays Sentinel, plays out Mystic, gets Cauldra complete. Is going to attack Little Karn for one. We draw an Urza's Mine. I think we just go for Sundering Titan. I mean, that would let my opponent equip Sword of Feast and Famine, in theory. Um, but it stops my opponent from having like a Force of Negation or something that could counter our threat. Planners is mine. I mean, I could also just empty my hand for an ensnaring bridge. There's some chance. This is difficult. I think Sundering Titan is the play. I mean, is it though? I don't actually know that it is. Play liquid metal coating. I will pay one to stop my opponent from drawing an eighth card. I need Karn Great Creator to stick around. I think. Maybe I just go Sundering Titan, down tick on land. That gets rid of both of my Planeswalkers, but it completely nukes my opponent's mana, and then we have a 7-10 that's attacking. Alright, let's do it. Let's go get Sundering Titan. Play Sundering Titan. Take out all these lands. Then down tick on Sea Chrome Coast. Pass the turn. We still have Blast Zone, which we can hopefully deal with. Oh, thank God. I was going to say, we're going to need to tick that up to two and um, destroy the Stoneforge Mystics. I can't believe we beat Aspiring Spike. That is not. I think that might be the first time I've actually ever beaten him. Anyway, we're three and one, and I'll see you guys in round five. All right, welcome to round five on the play. Uh, we got two thirds of Tron and a slow fourth version or fourth piece, but I think I'll keep. 
We are against a Yorian deck. Lead on power for the turn. Opponent plays Flagstones of Trocare. That's never a good sign when you're playing a Sack Star for green. A Relic. Ancient Stern. Plant. We do get a Mon. Press to the bottom. Pass the turn. So this is going to be a turn three Tron, but uh, we might get boom and busted here. Cleansing one. Get a full. So this is land destruct. Play a Mon. Play a Relic. Sylvan Scrying for opponent's card and grave. Pass the turn. Okay, opponent Prismatic Endings are Relic. Lotus Feet. Okay, we untap. We draw an Ancient. Play an Ancient Stern. Let's get a Ulamog. Slice Hunger. The bottom. Play tap. Play Worm Coil. Play Chromatic Sphere. Pass the turn. Opponent plays a Snow-Covered Plains. We untap. Draw Expedition Map. Go to Com. Attack for 6. 14. For green. Play Karn Great. Let me look up the deck playing Lotus Field. Control deck. Though usually not a Yorian. If this is Naya with Lotus Field, it's going to be like Land Destruction Ramp. Um, 4 mana. Could get an Oblivion. I think we just go for Liquid Metal Coating. Play Coating. Sylvan Scrum. Get another tower. Pass the turn. Five man flashes in solid. Okay. On their upkeep, shut off Sacred Foundry until they attack and kill Karn at least. <clears throat> they hit Karn for three. Karn down. Put Yorian in hand. Play a Copperline Gorge tapped. We draw Blast Zone. So play a tower. Play an Ulamog. Kill these two lands. Play Expedition Map. Pass the turn. Opponent will be able to cast another Solitude, most likely. Oh, they can just flicker it with Yorian. I did the math completely wrong. Yep. So they flicker Solitude. Kill Ulamog. I should have wished for Sundering Titan, because then I could have taken out Lotus Field as a forest. Let's go get Sanctum of Ugin. We draw another Expedition Map. Play Sanctum. Play Map. Pass the turn. We are at 42 life, though. Uh, so as long as my opponent doesn't cast Bust, we should be fine. Blood Sun. Okay. Play a Sacred Foundry, untapped. They don't lose any life. They hit us for seven. Let's go get a Redundant Urza's Mine. Untap. Get an Oblivion Stone. So, play Urza's Mine. Play Oblivion Stone. Pass the turn. This is one place where um, having access to all his dust would have been better. Actually, no, it wouldn't have, because Sanctum of Ugin can't trigger because Blood Sun. Opponent goes to combat, attacks for seven. We'll take seven. With so much life, it's worth it to take the hit, not just crack O-Stone immediately. Okay, they're casting Valakut Awakening again. Another Lotus Field. They're going to Cleansing Wildfire, our Power Plant. Might as well put a Fate Counter on Liquid Metal Coating. This is also why I didn't fetch up another basic for in fear of like a Blood Moon or something. Opponent thins our deck with a Cleansing Wildfire. Then they play Nahiri. Oh, they can take out O-Stone this way. Okay, so that was premature. I could have just waited on that one. Untap. We draw Karn Liberated. Play a Blast Zone. Play Big Karn. And I can take out the Lotus Fields because they don't have Hexproof now. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's worth it, though. We down tick, we lose him. We up tick, we probably lose him. So I guess we just take out the creatures. Um, we have eight mana currently. Opponent attacks and kills Karn. Plays an Eternal Witness. Gets back Cleansing Wildfire. Which is now a cantripping sinkhole. Okay, they loot with Nahiri, ditching Grove of the Burn Willows. Well, this is not the deck you want to play against with Tron. I'm surprised that this deck is in the same bracket that we are. I know there's greedy mana bases, but um, with all the hammer and aggro running around, I think this deck is our opponent's deck is poorly positioned. We'll play Yavi Maya. Eight mana, play Ugin. Minus five Ugin, reset the board, pass the turn. Opponent plays a Vivian Reed. Upticks to six, picking up a, another Lotus Field, playing a Blood Sun, playing a Lotus Field, playing a Wall of Blossoms for a cantrip, and Cleansing Wildfire, our last Urza's Mine. Okay, bit unfortunate, but not a lot we can do about that. Then they play Fury to kill Ugin. 
because free spells were a good idea. Um, we untap, we draw Sylvan Scrying. It's not overwhelmingly useful, unfortunately. We'll go get a power plant, play it, pass the turn. If nothing else, it thins our deck some. Brings us back up to eight mana if we were to get another Ugin, which would be pretty good right here. Opponent gets internal witness, so they can take us off of more mana. Okay. Abundant growth, they get to cantrip. Abundant growth, they get to cantrip. So opponent, I think, will play eternal witness and then just cleansing wildfire us again. Timeless witness. Not enough eternal witnesses. Opponent picks up cleansing wildfire. Takes out our power plant. No reason to shuffle. Then they can play eternal witness. Oh, Yasharn, Implaceable Earth. Search your library for basic forest and a basic plains. Put them into your hand. Players can't pay life or sacrifice non-land permanents to cast spells or activate abilities. We untap, we draw Ulamog, which we are, quite frankly, very far from casting. And I'm going to scoop it up. I don't actually think we can win. Okay, so we're going to bring in Nature's Claim, and I'm going to bring in Warping Whale. Warping Whale capable of countering sorceries. I'm also going to keep the relics in the main deck. Um, the question is, what do we cut? And I think the answer is one worm coil. Um, big Karn and Big Karn. Big Karn being our least impactful to our opponent's deck um, Tron threat, unless it's played on turn three. Uh, Little Karn, I think, is in general going to be better, even though it can just be lightning bolted. I would like to play first. It's almost natural Tron. Um, I am going to keep this because we do have uh, four mana threats. So if we get an early cleansing wildfire before we draw power plant, then at the very least we can um, still play a Karn Great Creator. Okay. Warping Whale is pretty excellent here. I could use it as ramp to play out a Karn. That wouldn't be unreasonable. Opponent is going to play a Wall of Blossoms. Do I want to keep this as a counter spell? Or do I want to play Great Creator next turn? Great Creator next turn doesn't do anything immediately. So I think I'm going to keep this as a counter target sorcery. I think it was justified. Play a Redundant Urza's Mine, pass the turn. Opponent untaps. They play a Copper Lion Gorge. And are passing. We draw an Ulamog, play a tower. I think I'm still going to hold on to Warping Whale. So my opponent's going to cast a Valakut Awakening, most likely. Okay, there it is. They can wheel away any number of cards they don't like. They untap. They're probably looking for a Blood Sun. There's the Blood Sun. Into an untapped Lotus Field. Into a second Blood Sun. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to use Warping Whale to... Yeah, we're going to make a token. Untap. We draw a Sylvan Scrying, play a Blast Zone, play Karn, Wish with Karn, get Liquid Metal Coating, and play Coating. Stop on my opponent's upkeep, shut off Lotus Field. So if they draw Nahiri, they could exile Liquid Metal Coating. Four mana, there's Nahiri. We just need to draw um, a Power Plant. If we can get a Power Plant, we can play a ton of stuff. Blast Zone is not Power Plant. Um, but I can re-wish for Liquid Metal Coating, then play my other Karn, because I don't have a 6 mana play that's going to be better. So I'll take Liquid Metal Coating. Play our other Blast Zone. Play Great Creator. Keep the new one. Play Coating. Then blow up Lotus Field. Pass the turn. So that does greatly hinder my opponent's mana up until they play a second Lotus Field. Um, but if we can draw a seventh land, any land, we can play Karn Liberated next turn, which would be pretty big. Okay, opponent plays an Abundant Growth and a land that isn't Lotus Field. Four mana, Yasharn, Implaceable Earth. Getting a Snow-Covered Forest and a Snow-Covered Plains, I think. They down tick to take out Liquid Metal Coating. We untap and draw an Ancient Stirrings. Mm -hmm. It's like, man, I wish I could wish for an Expedition map. It'd be so good. Um, so I cannot... I think I just have to wish for a Worm Coil. 
Like, getting a Oblivion Stone would be great, but there's a really good chance that my opponent can just deal with it. It's kind of the same with Worm Coil Engine, but... Pass the turn, because they're probably playing Path to Exile. Okay, opponent plays a Valakut Awakening. Puts back six cards and draws six, or five cards and draws six new ones. And they play a land. Looks like an Eternal Witness. Yep. Picking up a Lotus Field. Opponent passes. We draw Chromatic Star. So play the star. Can't sacrifice permanence to cast abilities. Um, well, crap. Because I think otherwise I would have wished for a Worm Coil to play that. That's, that's Kano not reading. Um... Go get Oblivion Stone. Play Oblivion Stone. Pass the turn. Okay, put a Cleansing Wildfire as a tower. We will get green mana. They're probably going to cast multiple Cleansing Wildfires this turn. Or just try to take us completely off of Tron. Opponent is going to attack and kill Karn, so we're going to block and kill Yasharn. Opponent plays Lotus Field. Plays Eternal Witness. Going to pick up Yasharn. Oh, Cleansing Wildfire, okay. So that takes us off of Urza's Tower. So no Tron anytime soon. And for the record, Crucible of Worlds would not help in this matchup. Okay, Surgical. That's a big, gigantic pain. But one I should expect out of a deck playing 80 cards with nothing better to do. So no Tron can be assembled here. We draw Karn, Great Creator. I can at least get Liquid Metal Coating using him. Ancient Stirrings, let's see what we get. No lands. Pick up Worm Coil. Rest of the bottom. Oh, I kind of want to activate Oblivion Stone. Go to combat. Attack for six. Opponent blocks. We gain six. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps and draws. Plays another Lotus Field. Goes to combat. Tax us for four. Puts Yorian in their hand. Plays Yorian. So we'll let it enter the battlefield. Blow up the world. They're floating mana. Do they have a flicker spell? Okay, so we'll draw a card, then get tokens. Yorian has nothing to flicker. Opponent plays Timeless Witness. Picks up Eternal Witness. Fun. Yorian has nothing to flicker. We untap. We draw Power Plant. It does let us get down Karn Liberated. So play Power Plant. But is that better than Great Creator? Great Creator... Mm. I don't have any relics. Uh, I didn't cite any out. Liberated ticking down on lands doesn't matter because my opponent has Lotus Fields. I might just be best off playing another Worm Coil here. And trying to pressure my opponent. So go to combat. Attack for 6. Take our opponent to 12. Play Worm Coil. Play Chromatic Star. Pass the turn. If they only land destruction spell once, which I'm not entirely convinced they're okay, they're gonna pick up Yorian. Which is gonna let them get a whole bunch of stuff. Because they can flicker both of these eternal witnesses before we can relic and exile the grave. They play Nahiri. They down tick on a token. Yeah, a lot of our big land destruction nonsense doesn't matter. And they play Yorian, they flicker all this stuff. And just get back an immense value. Okay. Timeless Witness getting back Eternal Witness. Eternal Witness getting back probably Cleansing Wildfire. Maybe Prismatic Ending. Valakut Awakening. Okay. Untap. We draw an Ancient Stirrings. So I think we Ancient Stirrings here. 
Another Oblivion Stone is probably not a bad idea. Rest of the bottom. Yeah, Cage doesn't help because they're picking up stuff out of the grave. Um, if I attack with Worm Coil without dealing with Nahiri, they can just down tick Exile Worm Coil as well. So, play Oblivion Stone. Sylvan Scrying. Get, uh, I don't know, any random land should be fine. Pass the turn. Although they did just pick up Eternal Witness, so they could get rid of our Oblivion Stone that way. By getting Prismatic Ending, I didn't think of that. They pick up Cleansing Wildfire. Uh, there's absolutely no value in them hitting the Tron lands, because they've already Surgical Tower. They should be hitting the Forests. That technically limits my options. So unless I top deck a land, I'm not going to be able to play Karn Liberated this turn. Of course, they could just be trying to take me off of Oblivion Stone activation. Which I mean is reasonable. <laughs> they had the Prismatic Ending anyway. Yeah, alright, we can't beat this. This is another one of those decks that's like, you could handcraft to, to, to kill Tron. And there's not much they could do about it. Um, and play Karn Liberated. I'm not going to Sac Sanctum. And kill Nahiri. Attack our opponent for six. Pretty sure they just block it down, yeah. So opponent can now start um, getting back Timeless Witnesses with Eternalize and just picking up all of their graveyard again. Yeah, I, I still don't know why they're hitting Colorless Lands with that. So they attack and kill Karn Liberated. I don't think we have a way to deal with that token. And I don't know that we can do enough damage. That would have been useful a lot earlier. Um, yep, yeah, I think we're dead. Hmm. I can't activate a Blast Zone because it entered with zero counters because of Blood Sun. Oh, but this is a seven or a three mana or four mana creature, isn't it? Let me read Eternalize. Exile this card from your graveyard, create a token that is a copy of it, except that it is a four four black zombie human with no mana cost. No mana cost, you say? All right. Oh, well, of course, tokens are too. Not that it mattered. We were not winning anyway. Um, all right, let's open up our treasure chest, see if we get anything good out of it. Five play points, a Deathbringer Liege, and a Pyromancer's Ascension. Um, so what do I have to say about Tron? It's still Tron, just worse. Um, like this, I, I wouldn't necessarily play this particular configuration, but that's because I have Force of Vigors. And that does technically help if I'm trying to grind for, like, you know, highest possible win percentage. I think it is better than um, Nature's Claim by a long shot. Um, Relic, and, Relic of Progenitus in the main seems fine. Uh, Surgicals, I feel like, would be better because they are zero mana. And they neuter particular cards that would be dealing, or that would be causing you problems. So, like, in the last match, I could have Surgical Cleansing Wildfire. Um... I could have surgical specific targets that my opponent was trying to buy back. I could have, you know, surgical Lotus Field, then they don't have a gigantic mana engine. Um, you know, it, it helps versus things like Hammer even, because if you surgical Colossus Hammer after using something like Force of Vigor to blow it up, then for zero mana, you've taken your opponent's best artifact from them. Um, so I, I don't think this is the proper configuration, but this is definitely a configuration you could play if you're on a budget, though if you're on a budget, I don't know why you're trying to play modern competitively right now, because uh, it's definitely kind of a pay-to-win format. Um, and I mean, it, modern usually is, right? But they're, the lack of budget options right now kind of concerns me. Uh, so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this content. And uh, if you did, please leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined. And remember, you can follow me on Twitch. Same username over there as you find me on here. I stream Wednesdays in the afternoon, sometimes the evening, and sometimes on Sundays during the day. Uh, that is going to be a thing going forward. I'm not committing to it 100%, but, you know, um, it'll probably happen more likely than not unless I'm really not feeling up to it. Um, side note, I don't really control what ads or how many ads play, so if the amount of ads are bothering you on any of my videos, you have my permission to use Adblock, 
uh, use, you know, a Raspberry Pi, Pi Hole, DNS filter. You're welcome to do whatever you want to get around ads. Um, I don't need the money from ad revenue. It's not that much. Uh, every video I make makes like a couple dollars at most. So if you like this content, but the ads are unbearable, you have my permission to block them. And if you feel the least bit guilty about that, uh, subscribe to my Patreon. Um, if you give me, let me put it this way, if you, as a human being, give me one dollar that is more money uh, coming from you than I would ever make off of ad revenue from you, even if you went back and watched every single video I've ever made. So, and I think that that's pretty unreasonable for anybody to expect. Uh, so, that's my stance on that. I reiterate that every now and again, kind of rarely now, uh, because I haven't been making as many videos, but I think it's important to say. And the Patreon credits will be coming back soon. I apologize that those haven't been on the last few videos. Uh, that is a thing that I need to do, but I'm, I'm working on updating them so that they are not just a uh, white text on a black screen, because I think that that's really boring, and I want it to be a cool thing, and I'm working on a cool thing. So that's what you got out of me for that. Hope you guys enjoyed this content. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!